there is no period in human history in which the ordinary man, the ordinary man, had as great an improvement in his lot in life as in the 19th century in the United States when the government was of trivial importance. So then what accounted for the movements, the very strong and positive movements to bring about governmental action? What accounted for those movements, those were fundamentally intellectual movements, they originated primarily in Britain and elsewhere. What accounted for them, I think, is a complicated story I won't profess to give a whole answer, but I think the important part of the answer is that it's a natural human tendency to take for granted the good things that happen and to regard as the workings of the devil the bad things. And that if a bad thing comes along, you say, my God, we ought to pass a law and do something about it. That's a very natural human tendency. I think the remarkable thing, the thing that needs to be explained, is not why we've had a movement toward collectivism and toward more government control, because that's been the natural state of mankind for thousands of years. The remarkable thing, in my opinion, from an intellectual point of view, is how you ever managed to get a century or a century and a half in which the dominant philosophy was the opposite. That's the exception. But it's so fascinating to hear you say that this has been the natural way in which men have moved since the beginning of time toward collectivism. Then why do you describe that brief period, that century or century and a half, as uh, the more normal, the more appropriate oh, I state? Don't. I, oh, you've used two terms. Fair enough. You said more normal, more appropriate. It's a state I prefer. It's a state that I think would be very much superior to what we're heading into. It's a state I think the ordinary citizen of this country would find superior, but it's not the normal natural state. And suppose you want to take a broad view of history for a moment and of geography. You cannot find a date in history at which the greater part of the human race was not living in a condition of tyranny and misery and dictatorship. Take it right now. The bulk of the human race is not living in a free world. The bulk of the human race is living in totalitarian or dictatorial governments. Can you name any date in history in which that wasn't true? Now, more extreme. Take any ge place in geography. Put your finger on the globe and go back over time. I don't believe there's a place where you can put your finger on the globe where mankind has, for most of human history, lived except in tyranny and misery. Then if you had a few brief occasions, Greece in the 5th century B.C., and even there, it's mixed because you had a slave society. Mm -hmm. It was a free society for the upper classes, not for the community. You had a brief period during the Renaissance in Italy. You had a, and then you have the latter part of the 18th and the 19th century, mostly the 19th century, first part of the 20th century. Those are the exceptions, not the rule. Then you're the one who seems to want to interfere with the natural order. Absolutely, I do. Then why do we call you a uh, conservative? <laughs> because I'm not. <laughs> because I'm a liberal. I want people to take thought about their condition and to recognize that the maintenance of a free society is a very difficult and complicated thing. And it requires a self-denying ordinance of the most extreme kind. It requires a willingness to put up with temporary evils on the basis of the subtle and sophisticated understanding that if you step in to try to do them, you not only may make them, to do something about them, you not only may make them worse, but you will spread your tentacles and get bad results elsewhere.